If you're looking to get started with Obsidian today, there are three things you need to know. Capture, linking, and refactor. We're gonna dive into Obsidian to teach you just how to do that. Now, before we dive in, I want to offer you a free gift. It can be really difficult to get started and understand what PKM or personal knowledge management is, how to take high quality notes. I've created a free resource for you to get you started on that through a five day email course. All you have to do is sign up for the link down below. It is completely free and I would love to have you join us. So this is what you typically see when you open Obsidian for the first time. You get this vault management screen. I'm gonna click create to create a new vault. I'm gonna name mine effective. And then I'm gonna hit browse. Browse is gonna tell Obsidian where to create your vault on your computer file system. I typically create a vaults folder under the documents folder on my computer just because I use Obsidian Sync to sync my folders. But if you wanna use Dropbox or iCloud, then go to those folders on your computer to create that vault there. I'm just gonna hit select folder and then hit create. So this is what happens when you first create a vault. You get a vault typically in dark mode, you get a welcome note, and that's really about it. The first thing we're gonna do just for the purpose of this video is transform this from dark mode to light mode using the command palette. I'm gonna hit control P or command P if you're on Mac, and I'm going to type light mode and hit enter. The command palette is a quick way that you can access just about any command inside of Obsidian. And it also serves as a keyboard shortcut reference guide if you're looking to learn keyboard shortcuts within the app as well too. It's really quite handy. So this is your vault that you get. You get a welcome note and a graph view when you first open this up. The nice part about Obsidian is that it's all plain text files in the file system. So if I open up my files here and I go to documents and vaults, my effective vault, you can see the welcome note here is a .md file, that's markdown. You don't see the markdown here because Obsidian has what's called a live preview editor. So if I click on vaults right at the beginning here, you can see that there's two asterisks surrounding this word and that makes it italicized. You can see that there is links over here. And now if I move my cursor in to where that link is, you can see that it's surrounded by two brackets or what we would call a wiki link. Uh, you can also add external links here like this one. It's just a markdown link. You can look that up online or go to the tutorial that we have on the channel up here in the corner about uh, how to use markdown inside of Obsidian as a quick primer. But we need to get started before we can really take advantage of the powerful tools inside of Obsidian, we need to get started actually capturing notes. So to do that, you've got to create a new note. To create a new note, you can go up here in the upper left-hand corner, you can use the command palette, or you can just hit Control or Command N, which gives you a note automatically titled Untitled. I'm just gonna call this Scratchpad because I'm just gonna brain dump a bunch of things that I've been thinking about and learning about lately, and then we'll try to figure out where it goes from there. Okay, so I've journaled some thoughts in here about things that I've been thinking about, things that I've been learning about. This is really the essence of capture in Obsidian. Just write down what you're thinking about. If you're reading something, write down what you're thinking about what you're reading. Pop a link in here so you can go back to the article online. Same thing if you're watching a YouTube video, listening to a podcast or reading a book, frankly. I'm not a big fan of taking quotational notes inside of Obsidian, though I do use Readwise Reader to get those in here, uh, solely for the reason that I find when I take notes on something, and I'm thinking about it in my own thoughts, it helps me process through that idea so it sticks better. And frankly, it just allows me to remember the context of why that thing mattered to me in the first place. Whereas if I just clip a highlight or clip a quote from a book or write down an idea that was shared in a, in, in a video, for example, it doesn't resonate with me as well later on. It might not be as helpful to me. So the next skill after capture is linking. How do we start linking inside of Obsidian? You can see that we've got a couple of links over here in our graph view, but they're not really all that connected. I'm gonna highlight a couple of phrases in here that I know I'm gonna wanna come back to. So I'm gonna highlight personal operations and I'm gonna hit the left bracket twice 
and that creates a wiki link. I'm gonna do the same thing for productivity. Personal knowledge management and time management. There's the bullet journal method, which is another topic area. Um, Obsidian is something as well. And Notion. There's also this idea here of an unstructured knowledge management tool. So maybe that's a topic that I wanna revisit and expand into in the future. Now you can see over here in the graph view that all of these links have been created, even though there are not notes there. One thing to remember when you create links is that it doesn't automatically create the note for you. You have to click on that. So I'm gonna click on the bullet journal method to create that note. You can see that it's blank. It automatically creates it with the title. And if I come back to the scratch pad note, uh, you can see that the link is now uh, more bold in color. It's a darker purple uh, instead of a light purple. The light colored links are ones that are not created. The dark ones are the ones that exist. So in the bullet journal method, uh, you know, I've got this information here. Um, I'm wondering if I need a refresher on it. I'm actually, what we're moving into now is step three, which is refactoring. Refactoring is a word that ta is taken from programming, which means basically to rewrite and restructure. And so we start off with a note where we don't really know where everything belongs. Um, we have a lot of different ideas here. We're talking about personal operations, uh, bullet journal method, different types of tools that I'm considering in my workflow. This also is the bullet journal method up here is one that I'm considering for my workflow as well. And so we have to start thinking through how do we refactor these notes? There's a feature inside of Obsidian that makes this really easy and it's called extracting a note. So I'm gonna highlight all of this about personal operations and I am going to right click and hit extract current selection. This is going to allow me to pick a note to merge it into, or I can start typing a new note name and add it to a new note. So I'm just going to put this as personal operations. So I have that one. Now you can see, creates a link. So it's created a file over here. It's created a link to that file. I'm gonna control click on that to open it in a new tab. And now you can see that I have personal operations here. I'm going to just refactor this and say definition. It's related to productivity, personal knowledge management, and time management. If I can spell, that would be really helpful. Uh, and so I'm gonna go back to the scratch pad and I'm gonna do the same thing here for these notes. And I'm gonna use the command palette to get to it this time. Extract current selection. I'm going to uh, look at this saying uh, current productivity workflow system thinking. Enter to create that one. And now you can see that I have links here. And then all that content is now in this note. Now you can see the graph has changed over here. Um, you can see that personal operations is connected to the scratch pad and those other uncreated notes. The scratch pad is connected to those two notes and same thing with current productivity systems thinking. This is the beauty of Obsidian is that you can start to put content in here and as you start linking it and refactoring it, you get the capability to start seeing how these different ideas are connected together. What I would love to do next is show you my personal vault so you can get a sense of what a more developed vault can look like in terms of how ideas are connected. All right, so this is my personal vault over here. I'm not gonna do too deep of a walkthrough, but I wanna show you the graph view. This is how insane the graph view can get inside of Obsidian. Now you can see that I have a lot of notes over here because some of them are from an old import. I don't want orphans on here at all, so I'm gonna just turn that off. There's lots of little connections out here, but this in the center is mostly my main graph. You can see there's a course that I took that's deeply connected. There is a couple of books like um, Time Off, which was one. Productivity is a big topic that I have linked. Um, 
I've got a couple journaling items in here. I've got training for my Scrum Master certification, community. Now, one thing to note here is that I don't spend a lot of time in the graph view. Usually what I do is I will spend time in notes, but I'll use what's called the local graph view to start seeing some of those connections. And I'll show you that real quick. So in order to get into a note, you can hit command O and just open a note that way. I'm going to look for my, the marketing seminar note. And then this was a course that I took on marketing a couple of years ago. In order to open the local graph view, I'm gonna open up the side pane and then I'm going to uh, click on these three dots and then I'm going to say open linked view, which is the local graph. This opens it in a tab over here. What I like to do to make this open all the time is just drag it over here into this side pane and now I have access to it. I'm gonna pull it back just for visibility purposes, but you can see that on this graph, it's connected to every single note. Now it's only a depth of one, so it's the direct links here, but what I like to do is just to put it up to depth of two so I can start to see where is this actually contextualized within my vault. And what this allows me to do in process is when I'm coming through and refactoring notes or I'm working on an idea, I can come back in and see, oh, there's actually a lot of connection here with the word empathy. Marketing is very heavily related to that. Or maybe I wanna just kind of do a journaling review and I can see that this was a heavy focus for me in my 2022 annual review. Now, all of this to say is that once you get started in Obsidian, the, the biggest thing to remember is just to start simple. Don't try to over-engineer it. Don't try to organize it too heavily. Start with just the notes that you have. And then once you get 50 or 100 notes in there uh, outside of the root, in the root of your vault, then start to figure out, how do I organize this? Do I add in some folders? Do I need to put in some tags? Do I do some other stuff with it to make it make more sense for me? There's a hundred different organization systems out there that you can use, but more likely than not, you're going to find something that is uh, either a mishmash of those or something you've discovered all on your own that's relevant to you to make the system work for you. So that's my best advice is just to start small like we are today, uh, start capturing, start linking, and then refactoring once there's too much stuff in a note for it to make sense anymore. I hope this was helpful for a walkthrough for you. And if you wanna go a little bit deeper in how to get started in taking high quality notes, join the free PKM Kickstart email course in the link below. My name is Justin with Effective. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay effective.